Welcome to the fifth episode of Dermatologist Talks Science of Beauty. I'm Chelsea, and today we're chatting with Dr. Tio Wan Lin on the topic of pigmentation, good skincare habits to cultivate, and her number one beauty faux pas. We're also going to touch on Dr. Tio's appearance in Dior's Digital Skin Talk and learn about exciting new research on skin stem cells. Dr. Tio, is there a difference between pigmentary diseases and our concerns with our skin tone? So, true disorders of pigmentation, such as post inflammatory hyperpigmentation that arises from chronic inflammation, such as from eczema or acne. Um, melasma, solar lentigo, which are really you know, often referred to as sunspots or age spots, and freckles are, are conditions that can and should be treated separately and not to be confused with um, altering one's skin tone. From what I understand though, pigmentation is a marker of your skin aging as well. Can you share a little bit more about that? The current method that has uh, prevailed in dermatology practice uh, for the last decade uh, you know, of assessing skin age is based on the Glogal photo aging scale. Our methods of assessing skin age um, is increasingly refined and I believe that this photo aging scale is very likely uh, to be superseded by you know, technologies created by deep learning methods. Such technologies enable accurate assessment of skin factors such as radiance, vitality, that previously could not be objectively assessed. Moving on, what do you think is a good skincare habit to cultivate and what would be a big beauty faux pas? Well, what is extremely basic yet often shockingly overlooked is the importance of cleansing. The fundamental principle is that each individual has a set of healthy skin organisms as part of bacterial flora, which are important to prevent diseases. Conditions like acne and eczema are closely related to the presence of bacteria. When we're talking about cleansing, we're not referring to harsh antibacterial soaps or cleansers, but rather the message here is gentle and effective cleansing. The very process of emulsification is a science that dissolves microorganisms into a foam or an emulsion, which is then physically removed with the rinsing of water. Now, a big beauty faux pas, I have encountered a number of individuals who tell me they just wash the skin with water as they feel that all the soaps make their skin worse. A lot of cosmetic cleansers are indeed not formulated for sensitive skin. A hallmark of a good cosmetic skincare line is born out of a simple test of how well it is tolerated by sensitive skin. In dermatology, sensitive skin is more precisely described as referring to a subset of individuals with atopy those who have a history of eczema, allergic rhinitis, and asthma. In the general population, there are some individuals who may only have sensitivity when there is a trigger, some individuals who have overt eczema. But the truth is, a good cleanser will be able to achieve a well-tolerated cleansing effect in both groups of individuals. Moving on a little for our listeners, Dr. Tio recently took part in Dior's Digital Skin Talk hosted by Giselle Bunchen and Philip Bacardi. We would love to hear your thoughts on the science behind cosmeceuticals that target skin stem cells. The novel discovery made by the Helios Research Institute is that aging skin stem cells do not decrease in number but rather reduce in their energy potential. And that is primarily responsible for the aging process. That is consistent with our current knowledge of inflammaging, um, a key a pathway of aging in the skin exposome concept, um, because it relates directly to stem cell exhaustion. In the same vein, what should we be looking out for in cosmeceutical skincare that can target the aging skin stem cell? In the case of Dior's Capture Total Serum, 
The Longosa flower is part of a uh, four flower extract that um, is patented and has been shown in cell studies, um, specifically proteomic studies, to exert a positive effect on the uh, mitochondria of aging skin stem cells. So the method of delivery is also very relevant because when you are thinking of optimizing absorption of a cosmeceutical, there are two main ways to do that. The first, which is what Dior has done, uh, is to um, present it with a vector. So in this case, it's a bioformented lipoprotein peptide that enhances the absorption of the floral complex. Now, the other method, which is what um, the materials, are, the biomaterials arm of my um, research company works on is the use of polysaccharides as well as polymers to act as mini reservoirs that is to enhance delivery of the cosmeceutical ingredient. Thank you for sharing that. I feel like I learned a lot about up and coming aging skin stem cell research. Well, that about sums up the episode. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode.